Hi. 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 Tell us who you are, where are we, and what is Tessa Suit? Hi. My name is Dimitri Mikhailchuk, and I'm a business development in Tessa Suit. And Tessa Suit is the full body haptic suit, but that's made for virtual reality. Uh, it contains, it has uh, cl climate control and motion capture to create that level of immersiveness. We also paired it up with some biometrical sensors so to under better understand what the person is going through, uh, the psychometrics, so we could uh, adjust the content accordingly and uh, to create alternative endings in different types of scenarios. Right, so for people who are coming to this completely brand new, and don't know why does a Tesla suit exist? Why, what's wrong with, not wrong, but tell us why virtual reality. Uh, absolutely. Um, basically, when the user first gets the virtual reality headset, and when they put it on, uh, the first thing they do is they look around and go with the wow effect of the visuals. But then they quickly realize that they want to see their hands, and they can't. Uh, and even then, uh, if they can see their hands, they can't see their feet, so they, the, the rest of the body isn't participating. And this is what we thought about, and we've included the rest of the body into the experience, and this is where people can uh, either be touched or transmit the touch, the sense of uh, high impact or like uh, light stroke and, and things like that, uh, to feel the environment on themselves, so i.e. be present in the virtual world. Where did this idea come from? Um, our CTO Serge Kors was working on 5D cinemas for the for the uh, larger entertainment parks, but uh, the way he saw it, uh, he thought it's not uh, immersive enough to begin with, and then it's big and bulky, so only big companies can afford it. Uh, so he thought we, we need to go on the skin level, and this is how it was. Uh, the idea was born, uh, and uh, for the last six years he's been developing the idea and uh, built a team around it. And so here we are. What's your favorite part of the suit? Well, um, I love the design. I love the fact that it's got uh, uh, haptic feedback, which is uh, working on the same electrical principle as our own brain, and therefore we can simulate a very close sense of uh, sen a very close set of sensations to what the skin would normally feel. So, if I was a beginner and asked you, could you explain haptic technology to me? What, how would you describe it? Well, haptics is uh, anything that provides sense of uh, touch or being touched. Like uh, on the phones, we have little vibration when we tap on the keys, so that's that's haptics. Uh, haptics also comes in terms of in the form of vibration and uh, controller with uh, games consoles, but uh, we've gone away from that and we simulate the the actual touch sensation on uh, through the skin stimulation uh, within the suit. And so, when people put on the suit for the first time, what are their reactions? Uh, they also wowed even more than by the actual VR visuals. Uh, very excited. Cool. So we would love to see a demo. Could you take yeah. us through what an experience is like? Well, I have Gary here. He can uh, help me out to run the demo. Uh, let me connect uh, the battery. Uh, if you grab, grab the battery there. Uh, right. So. Um, as you can see, the suit is completely untethered. Uh, Gary's going to run on batteries. Uh, we've got the battery here. This is obviously a, a late prototype, so this is going to change for the, in the final product. The whole computer is embedded in the in the fabric. Uh, the whole suit is built of uh, smart fabrics, and I'll show you uh, the compatibility runs for, for between various devices. Like uh, at the moment, I'm going to show it on the tablet. Um, we have a little suite for designing the sensations and I'm connecting wirelessly. Uh, hopefully the interference will allow me to work uh, <laughs> at CES Hall. It, it's been awful so far, but uh, let's get it. Uh, yep, I'm connected. So I can show you, uh, we have a little simulator where we have all the uh, points mapped out and we can simulate different points on Gary. So uh, let's crank it up a bit so he could feel things. Yep. And so Gary, tell us, where do you feel it? Oh, shit. oh, <laughs> oh my god. So yeah. <laughs> so, Gary's obviously uh, quite a rude person. So what do, you, what do you feel now, Gary? I feel it in my arm. Yeah. So wh what do you feel it now? I feel it right here. Okay. Right here. And now? In my back. 
Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, it's completely wireless, and we still um, uh, can, can transmit the sensations over the air. Um, I'm trying to set like a really, really soft uh, stroke sensation there. What do you feel now? I feel it right here. And, and um, yeah, so trying to give him a little massage. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously we built a suit uh, so it, would, it was capable to, of generating the virtual weight as well. We engaged the muscles and this is how if, Gary, if you put your hand out, not too far out, like this. Um, if I engage with this, uh, uh, see if with the biceps we can pull his, pull his arm down, for example. And like through, through, through uh, higher levels, we can engage his uh, fingers as well. See, so this is an intentional, and this is what we can do to simulate the virtual objects, uh, like a glass being taken and held, and uh, to while well, while interacting with muscles that counter pull, we create that sense of resistance in in virtual reality. So. so when, yeah. um, yeah, well, electrical stimulation is what we get from, from our own brain to our skin and the muscles. That's how the brain operates the muscles, actually. So uh, while uh, we transmit the sensations onto the nervous endings, uh, they send the impulse in back uh, to the brain and the, re the brain responds that it, uh, the muscle needs to contract, for example, or the skin would then feel the sensation of uh, being touched or like the impact. So um, the idea of little electrical shocks or pulses around the body um, could sound potentially unsafe. Is it safe for people to use? It is absolutely safe. A, the technology that we've taken, we've borrowed it from medical science uh, and it's been used for like over 25 years in medical field. Uh, we've also uh, uh, limited the levels on the hardware side that it cannot be exceeded whatever whatever happens so it's fairly safe uh, it's uh, the only limitations would be pregnant women and people with uh, uh, heart problems but this is uh, this is just a normal um, precaution for EMS devices yeah. so gamers love a good game could you show us uh, this in the gaming environment Mark? oh absolutely let's let's dive in into uh, VR game. Uh, Gary, if you put the headset on, I'll get you connected. Yeah, do you want to? Um, let me stand you some here. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm connecting Gary to the gaming laptop so he could uh, get the sensations coming from the laptop from the game that's going to be run on that. And uh, in a second, I'll run the game. Right, it's launching. So this is uh, <laughs> this is a preview, Gary. So you you relax, and probably because you you you're sensitive, if you go into the menu. Okay. And adjust it for yourself. See the Tesla suit? Yeah. Uh, calibration. So yeah, it's fine. So you just go. Yeah. No, no, no. That's too. Uh, go down and go down and all the way down. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah. So if you look up a bit, you see the button called back. No, no, no. Up in the middle. Up. Yep. And go to continue. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So ready? Yeah. There we go. So now Gary is engaging in the game and he obviously just be careful with uh, not approaching him too, too closely because he feels where he's getting shot from and so he's turning uh, exactly to the point. See, he reacts to the shots and he can know the directionality of it. So that's how he gets immersed in the, in the VR. And also he gets a bit of a kickback on the gun. So it would be, uh, uh, it would feel like a natural uh, kickback, like in the game. 
That's what creates the full immersiveness. Yeah. Incredible. And so obviously, a Western game is a, a good example. What other games um, have you worked with? What other projects? We, we're working with uh, multiple indie, indie games creators and uh, a couple of AAA games uh, titles. The AAAs generally don't allow us to talk about the games uh, before they're released. Indies, we've, uh, we've worked with 4i Labs on a nice zombie game. And we've worked with uh, Octobox on this uh, um, this shooter. Um, so yeah, we're, we're engaging all other uh, a lot of training apps as well. So we do uh, we do do assisted training within the VR. Uh, and that would be that would include sports, uh, various uh, various types of sports. It's uh, rowing, it's uh, tennis tennis training. And it's probably the the golf swing is uh, good to mention. Yeah. Uh, for people. Should we give Gary a moment to uh, come back to uh, reality? Okay, Gary, you, you, right, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll disconnect you. So, yeah, you can come out now. <laughs> Welcome back. So it's quite a full body workout, quite a big experience. Yep. He definitely so, puts you in fight or flight mode. <laughs> uh, you can see that he's quite tired from having uh, yeah. such a incredible uh, workout. I mean, this, in terms of besides just gamification, is, is uh, in terms of healthcare, is this something that you, you're also exploring? Absolutely. We, in order to make the experience uh, closer to what it is now, we had to embed several uh, types of uh, biometrical sensory sensors uh, in order to read off the galvanic skid resistance, for example, to adjust the levels so the person would uh, feel uh, the sensations at that person's level uh, because different skin, type, skin types obviously have different uh, uh, sensitivity if you want and all that can be then uh, transformed into medical grade data that can be collected and then uh, obviously we, we would be able to tell the psychological state of the person we could then add it to the apps that manage the um, stress, te uh, stress levels so this is quite useful for uh, a, com a company like a company training apps, uh, enterprise uh, apps. So, so could this be used to help in terms of people's personal fitness? Oh, absolutely. Uh, because it's EMS, uh, electrical muscle stimulation device, uh, it also helps to work out. So everything that Gary was doing and all that haptic feedback with a kickback, it was creating some type of workout for, for his muscles. So wherever the games used to be blamed for people getting <laughs> less uh, less active, we put it back in the yeah, yes, back in the game. Yeah, you're putting activity back into the game. That's it. Yes. In why did uh, why is Tesla suit specifically at CES? Well, it's our kind of pre first preview of the tech. We want to engage the game developers and app developers to work together. Um, we just try to um, uh, show a little presence and. Uh, uh, generally collect uh, some contacts and networking. Uh, we've seen quite uh, quite interesting projects here as well, who we partnered with already. So uh, interesting things are coming up uh, this year and, and after. Where's the company based? We're based in London, um, in the UK. Uh, we have a branch in Belarus, Minsk. So um, we're in two locations at the moment, but looking forward to expand to California sometime mid middle of this year. And for people Watching from the international community, what type of partners are you looking for? We're definitely looking for uh, partners in, uh, in development, game development, and app development. We also would like to engage with location based uh, uh, entertainment uh, providers, be it theme parks or just uh, uh, smaller, smaller location based uh, uh, environments. We would like to work with uh, uh, content creators in general i.e. Uh, free 360 movies, for example, where we could uh, collaborate on like alternative ending movies and, and uh, smarter way of uh, delivering the content. So we saw a solo experience now with Gary. Talk about the location base. So can these suits be used in a multiplayer environment? We build them uh, to be multiplayer friendly from the very beginning. Uh, at the moment, the suits support like 16 players in one location. Uh, but also networking will add un literally almost unlimited number of uh, users into one system, uh, providing the game supports it. Uh, is, I 
And in terms of barriers to entry, are these suits quite expensive? Is the idea for it to be used professionally or to be used in the home environment? Uh, we always wanted to put it in uh, people's homes, so make it a household brand. Uh, at the moment, they, they, they sell at a higher price because we were targeting B2B, obviously. Uh, and we would start the prices from one and a half to two and a half thousand US dollars. But we are planning to lower the price uh, to a very affordable consumer level, pro uh, level. Um, so people could actually buy it and probably use it with their uh, consoles and PC, PCs at home. So if I was a gamer and I came up to you and said, tell me about Tesla suit, why should I buy it, what would you say? Well, that's the only way you'd, exp you'd want to experience the VR, because it pl places the entire body, not just the visuals and the oral sensations, but the entire body into the digital space. Yeah. Um, and the big picture, where do you want to be in the next few years? What, what, what's coming next for Tesla suits? Well, hopefully in two to three years, we will see the VR becoming the household name as well. And so this is where we're going to start engaging the end user. Excellent. Well, we wish you lots of right. luck and look Thank forward you. to gaming with you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.